Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. We have Survivor Series and NXT TakeOver this coming weekend. Make sure you check out my predictions video for both shows. Got your questions from Twitter.com slash Aaron Rift using the hashtag PAIV. Quick announcement, I will be in LA next week, so the plan right now is maybe to do one no dq &A video. Since I'll be out of town, I will not have access to my Mac, which makes it more difficult to do the Q&A videos. I think I will do a few no dq lives on Facebook, which will be posted onto the YouTube channel, maybe Monday and Tuesday night. So there will be a little bit of a break from no dq &A video next week, so don't freak out. The show will go on. Things will continue as planned. Thank you all for your support. Now let's get down to your questions. First one today comes from MattUU90. Goldberg was again a little lethargic and rusty. Him and Brock main eventing Survivor Series could be risky. Samoa Joe could appear at Survivor Series? A lot of people have asked me about a potential surprise debut at Survivor Series since WWE had teased something on their YouTube channel by posting the top 10 Survivor Series debuts. It could just be WWE trying to generate traffic for their YouTube channel and nothing else, but there also could be something to that. I would love to see a surprise debut at Survivor Series. I would love to see Samoa Joe debut. Somebody actually suggested on the comments from the predictions video that I should do fantasy booking on some of these videos. So here's what I would do. I would have Brock Lesnar beat Goldberg at Survivor Series and then after the match Paul Heyman gets on the mic and says that Lesnar is officially announcing his retirement. He has conquered everybody. There's no one left. He's only in it for the money and it's time to go home. He doesn't give a damn about the fans so on and so forth to get the crowd booing Brock Lesnar and then all of a sudden Samoa Joe's music hits. Joe comes out, the crowd is going nuts for this. You know they would pop huge for Samoa Joe. He would come out, they would have a brief physical confrontation, Joe would get the better of Lesnar, Lesnar takes off and then the next night on Raw Paul Heyman says that Lesnar will not fight Samoa Joe unless Samoa Joe is able to prove himself. He's unproven. So Samoa Joe goes on this winning streak and that eventually sets up the match Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania and Joe beats Lesnar. That's how I would do it. So you asked me about Joe, that's what I would do. Will it happen? I would be surprised, but I would like to see it. This one comes from Torvik. I wasn't excited for Goldberg Lesnar 2 at the beginning after the Go Home show and I'm still not. Are you? Why or why not? I'm more intrigued by the match. I think that that would be the proper term to use instead of excited. I am concerned about Goldberg and how he will perform in that match. Will he get hurt? Will he botch moves? Will the crowd turn on him? There are a lot of questions about that match. And I'm, I'm hoping that Goldberg will be able to go out there and deliver a match that fans are satisfied with. I'm very concerned. I'm hoping WWE has a plan for that match. I hope that the people in charge of putting that match together will work around Goldberg's limitations and hide his weaknesses. I mean, that's really what you have to do. I think they should have made this a no DQ match, and they, they still might. There's always a possibility they'll add that stipulation at the last minute. I think it should just be a, a violent brawl. They, they go in the crowd and fight. You know, there's not a lot of holds exchanged. It's just a lot of punching and throwing into the barricade and that sort of thing. I think that's the best way you can have the match succeed without exposing Goldberg. And um, hopefully Goldberg can do enough where he can get by and it'll be an entertaining match. That's what I'm hoping. Like everyone else, I hope it turns out well. This one comes from AC Cool. Should Dean Ambrose turn heel at Survivor Series or TLC? In my opinion, Ellsworth should cost Ambrose and SmackDown Live the Survivor Series match, causing Ambrose to snap. 
The problem with that is you have TLC and Ambrose is fighting AJ in a TLC match. So I think it's too soon to turn Ambrose. You know, turning him at Survivor Series would not be the right move. But TLC, I mean, a lot of people feel that the Ellsworth storyline is starting to run its course. And I agree. I think there's a great opportunity to turn Dean Ambrose, but you want to do it when Ellsworth still has some value and there are people still invested in Ellsworth. If you wait too long, people will cool off on Ellsworth and it wouldn't make much of an impact. But I think the perfect way to write off Ellsworth is to have him accidentally cost Ambrose the match at TLC and that's when Ambrose snaps and just destroys Ellsworth. Ellsworth is taking out on a stretcher and he's put in an ambulance and that's the last time we ever see James Ellsworth, at least for a very long time. Uh, that That's his character be, being written off after an attack, a vicious attack by a newly turned heel Dean Ambrose. That's what I would do. This one comes from Stefan. Do you think James Ellsworth will interfere in the main match at Survivor Series, in the man's match at Survivor Series, either costing SmackDown team the victory or helping them win? That's interesting because I'm not sure if that's going to be the overall outcome of that match. James Ellsworth costing SmackDown. I could see there being some sort of deal where Ellsworth accidentally costs somebody. But I think, you know, going back to that previous idea, I think it would make more sense for Ellsworth to cost AJ. If, if any anything else, it's... Ellsworth being a distraction that causes AJ to be eliminated from the match, and that further sets up AJ versus Ambrose at TLC. Um, whatever the case is, you would think that something's going to happen with Ellsworth, and he will distract somebody and will play some role, most likely affecting SmackDown in a negative way. But will it lead to the victory for the Raw team? I mean, my gut feeling is... There's going to be something going on between Lesnar and Shane McMahon, you know, rather than Lesnar versus Joe, which is what I would like to see. So I think Ellsworth will play a role in the match, but not be the deciding factor in the outcome. Got this one here from Anna Tube. Hey Aaron, do you think Undertaker's promo means he will feud with whoever caused SmackDown's team to lose? Maybe Randy Orton as rumor. That could happen as well. I mean, there, there are so many possibilities for this Survivor Series match with Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. There are so many different ways it can go, and I mean, I'm fairly certain that whatever does happen will be the start of the, the ultimate build towards WrestleMania. So will Undertaker come out and challenge the guy that loses the match for the team? That very well could happen. I mean, I'm not sure what direction WWE is going in with Undertaker. Is he going to face Randy Orton? Or is he going to face AJ Styles? Or is he going to face John Cena? Or is he going to face all those guys and Undertaker is going on this final run? I mean, his promo on SmackDown did seem to indicate that he's going to have a run from now until WrestleMania. And he's not just doing the WrestleMania match. So it could be a situation where AJ loses the match and Undertaker faces AJ at the Royal Rumble, wins the Rumble, and then maybe faces Orton at Elimination Chamber, and then faces Cena at WrestleMania. So, uh, you know, that, that very well could end up being what happens. At this point, I mean, it's all a big question mark, and there are so many different ways it can go. So, I'm just hoping WWE comes up with something that is compelling and gets all of us as fans emotionally invested heading into WrestleMania season. Got this one here from Eric Cruz. With rumors confirming Sami Zayn will win the IC title and it going to Raw, what will that do to the SmackDown Live mid card? Okay, nothing is confirmed at this point, so there, there's no guarantee Sami Zayn's winning the IC title, and there's no guarantee that the Cruiserweights are going to SmackDown. I know there are the reports about that, but it's all speculation. Nothing is 100%, and even if that was a plan that WWE had, things can change. They can always flip-flop and decide not to change the titles. And quite frankly, I think it's better to 
keep the Cruiserweight division on Raw and not have the IC title go to Raw. I think, you know, I talked about this during the predictions video, my thoughts on the Cruiserweight division. I just think that Sami Zayn is better off being on Raw. I think Raw, as a three-hour show, needs as much as possible. SmackDown is good as it is. So if you take away from SmackDown, um, you know, I think SmackDown will be fine. It's a two-hour show, but, you know, you take away from Raw, you're, you're already dragging out the show as it is, and the three hours already feel like a long time. So the last thing you want to do is take away from take away from Raw, like with the Cruiserweight division. So, you know, I think Raw needs as much as possible. SmackDown, if SmackDown loses the IC title or they lose something to Raw, you know, it's not the end of the world. SmackDown is doing just fine as a two-hour show. This one comes from Vince Fears, No DQ. If the IC title goes to Raw, would you like to see SmackDown Live bring in the TV or European title as a mid-card title? Again, SmackDown doesn't need it. I mean, I think the idea of a TV title would be cool. There's no need for a European title. I mean, people talk about that title being brought back, and that's like the last title I would bring back. Um, there's just no, no need. If I was going to introduce another title, I would do something different like a, a uh, trios title, something new that we haven't seen in WWE before. And I would probably have that title on Raw because Raw's a three-hour show and you need as much as possible. SmackDown doesn't need another title. The shows, for the most part, SmackDown has been consistently good since the draft. SmackDown doesn't need more than it already has. I mean, it would just be overkill. This one comes from Robert Hansen. If SmackDown gets the Cruiserweight division, does that mean Raw will bring up some wrestlers from NXT to refill the roster? You would think that would make sense, but at the same time, you do not want to call up too many people from NXT in a short time. Um, you know, NXT needs guys like Nakamura there for the time being, since NXT is a touring brand, and you need some you need some top stars in NXT. So that would not be good for NXT to call up a bunch of people. All the more reason not to get rid of the cruiserweights on Raw. All the more reason not to take people off the Raw show. So um, I think that would that would be bad for NXT if WWE did that. Um, NXT needs some of those guys and you need to slow things down a little bit and not call up so many people so quickly. Got this one here from Danta. Raw and SmackDown were kind of boring to me. What was missing from both shows, especially SmackDown with the 900th episode? I actually thought both shows were good this week. I thought Raw was better than average. I liked the Goldberg build-up. And SmackDown, I thought, was really solid. I mean, the only thing I would have done differently with SmackDown is I would have had a little bit more nostalgia since it is the 900th episode. You know, Taz was backstage filming content for the WWE Network. They're doing an ECW special. I would have had Taz come out and just do commentary on one match, just something for a good nostalgic moment. Have Taz come out there, maybe bring back a few more past stars from SmackDown. Um, they could have done a little bit more, but as it is, I thought it was fine. I, I thought SmackDown was a good show. I enjoyed the Undertaker segment to close the show, the cutting edge, and I thought the build-up for Survivor Series was good on both shows. So, you know, I, I, I thought both were better than average, I mean, especially Raw. Raw was definitely better than average. This one comes from TJ Perkins. With Charlotte having this pay-per-view streak, do you see her being pinned at Survivor Series or do you see her picking up the win? This is a great point that you mentioned that I failed to recognize when I did the predictions for Survivor Series. You're right. WWE has been doing this Charlotte winning streak and because of that, I think she pretty much has to win at Survivor Series. Even if she, I mean, even if she gets like counted out or something, that would still count as a loss. So, yeah, I mean, for WWE to keep this streak going, Charlotte has to survive. She has to be a survivor and her team has to win. I mean, not only, not only does her team have to win, but I think she has to be one of the sole survivors. So, yeah, um, that, that 
makes a lot of sense. And now that I think about it, that's all the more reason why I expect the Raw team to win at Survivor Series so Charlotte can keep her pay-per-view streak intact. This one comes from The Mangs. Never in my entire life did I think Randy Orton in a hoodie would be working with Bray Wyatt. How long would you keep it going? I have no idea what they're doing with Randy Orton. I mean, my initial belief was it was a repeat of the Daniel Bryan storyline with Bray Wyatt, but now there's been the talk about Randy Orton facing The Undertaker. I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not a fan of it, really, because it just doesn't make much sense for Randy Orton to actually be with Bray Wyatt and be this heel character. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. And um, I know Orton prefers being a heel, but he's not really doing much. He's, he's just been there. And yeah, he's got the hoodie on, and yeah, I'm not feeling it. So I'm hoping at Survivor Series we will see something develop and we'll get a clear idea of what's going on with Randy Orton moving forward because um, right now it's very confusing. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. This one comes from Liam Cooper. Did TJ Perkins drop the belt due to his rumored backstage heat? That I'm not so sure about. I mean, I'm not even sure there's backstage heat against him. I think that it's more the fact that the Cruiserweights haven't really been catching on as something special on Raw. And I think a lot of that is just due to how it's been presented. I mean, there are a couple of issues. The big issue is the cruiserweights are being watered down. They're not going out there and doing all the really crazy stuff they were doing during the Cruiserweight Classic, which was getting rave reviews. The cruiserweights have to be at a certain level. You know, they're not going to be allowed to go out there and outshine the big time performers, the heavyweights like Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. Um, the cruiserweights have to know their role as The Rock might say. So that, that's problem number one. And I think the other problem is making the Cruiserweights a separate entity from everything else on Raw. I think WWE should probably just get rid of the logo that they put on the ring and the changing the rope color and all that stuff and have the Cruiserweights interact with other people on the roster. Um, just stop trying to make them like it's a whole separate segment from the rest of Raw. I just don't think that's working. So just make it a normal part of Raw and have the characters interact with each other and uh, maybe let them do their thing a little bit more. Let them go out there and try to steal the show. I mean, that, that's what got them over in the first place. So why, why hold them back? This one comes from Smart Mark 99 People say the main event should always be the last match on a card. Others like Meltzer and Ronaldo say otherwise. Your thoughts? I think the main event, the final match on the show, should be the match that fans are looking forward to the most, traditionally. And I also feel the show should end with something significant that is going to have the fans' interest peaked. So, for example, if Samoa Joe was going to debut at Survivor Series at the end of the show, if he was going to debut at the end of the Brock Lesnar-Goldberg match and come out there and attack Brock Lesnar, I would end the show with Lesnar versus Goldberg. Even if there's a risk of the fans turning on the match, Joe coming out and getting in Lesnar's face would be a huge moment to end the show and create this buzz. You want buzz at the end of a pay-per-view. You want the fans to be talking about what just happened and being holy crap and, and feeling like that. You know, Survivor Series needs a big moment like that. And that's what you need to do for every WWE pay-per-view. You need to end it on a high note, positive or negative, just something that's going to get people talking. Um, I think back to like SummerSlam, several of the SummerSlams that I went to in LA that, that ended really strongly, um, you know, 2013 when... Triple H turned on Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton came out and cashed in Money in the Bank. That was huge. That was the perfect way to end that pay-per-view. And, and those are the kind of things that you need when you end a pay-per-view. It needs to end with a bang. So, 
the main event should be whatever is going to lead to that bang. This one comes from the list of Jericho. Yo, Aaron, do you think Survivor Series 97 is the best one? So historic. Kanan Blackman's in-ring debut. Austin's return, Montreal Screwjob. Okay. I'm not so sure Steve Blackman debuting is an all-time classic Survivor Series moment. I'm not sure if you watched that actual card, but it was pretty bad. Um, the Montreal screw job was very historic. I mean, arguably the most famous finish in wrestling history. That was huge. But up until that point, that Survivor Series was pretty much a stinker. Uh, Kane versus Mankind was good from what I remember, but it was fairly one-sided. Um, and the, the Survivor Series matches I thought were, for the most part, terrible. Um, so I would not consider that Survivor Series to be anywhere near close to the top. Um, it has the biggest moment, arguably, but not, not one of the biggest shows in terms of qual overall quality. Um, you know, I would say 2002 or even 2001, despite the Invasion storyline being so heavily botched, um, you know, th those were higher quality Survivor Series pay-per-views, in my opinion. That'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Stay tuned to No DQ for the very latest regarding the Survivor Series pay-per-view. NoDQ.com will have live coverage. Myself and Jeff Meacham will be doing a post-show in person together. Subscribe. Please spread the word about No DQ&A video. And I will see you guys next time.